Today I'm going to answer a question which I get asked a fair amount, and that is, how can I find out the formula or get a rough idea for the formula of a perfume based on the ingredients label which is found on the back of the packet? So, if you've looked at the box of a perfume before, you might notice that it says ingredients and then it gives you a list of various things. It will usually start off with something like alcohol denat, then it will usually say parfum. And after that, there are a lot of um, chemical names, so things like benzyl benzoate, limonene, linalol, coumarin, uh, citral, citronellol. And if you've been watching my videos on perfumery, you'll know that some of those, like eugenol and citronellol, are raw materials that you may go and put inside your perfume. So what some people assume is that if they go and buy these raw materials that are listed in the ingredients of a perfume, then they should be able to put them together in some kind of order and go and recreate the perfume. And it makes sense, right, because usually when you have an ingredients list, it tells you what's inside it, and you would think if you could just find the amounts, then you would be able to make that thing. Now, um, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Perfume houses are pretty good at keeping their formulas top secret. But in this video, I'm going to actually go and explain these ingredients labels and why they're there and what they actually mean so you can understand a bit better why you can't actually use these ingredients labels in order to get a formula or really get anywhere close at all to the perfume. At the end of the video, I'll also discuss a couple of methods which you actually can use to go and get the formula of a perfume. I won't go into detail, but I'll at least mention what they are and maybe I'll do a future video on them. So, let's begin. So, these ingredients labels that you find on the back of perfumes, you'll actually notice that you don't just find them on the back of perfumes, but you find them on the back of most cosmetic products, so things like uh, hand creams, shampoos, hair gel, anything like that really, anything that's a cosmetic, they have these ingredients labels. And that's because in the EU cosmetics law, they say that if you make a cosmetic product and put it on the market, then you have to have an ingredients list as part of the requirements to have it for sale. Now you can't just put any old ingredients list, you have to do a quite specific ingredients list. And what you have to do is list all of the ingredients in your cosmetic formula going from the strongest to the weakest. The exception is anything under 1% of the final concentration or the final weight, that can be listed in any order you want. And I guess that's because uh, when you get down to the minute amounts of things, it really tells quite a lot uh, the order of which you put them in, if it had to be from highest to lowest, so allowing you to put all of those tiny things in whatever order you like, I guess allows you to keep a little bit of secrecy about your formula. So they say you have to list any ingredient which you put in the formula, and you can't just write it any way you want, you actually have to use the kind of proper or inky name as they call it, and that is the International Nomenclature for Cosmetic Ingredients Naming System. So for just about any ingredient you would put in a cosmetic product, there is actually a big list of these ingredients and they all have an official name, so you have to go and use that official designated name in your ingredients list. Now there is a bit of an exception for perfume ingredients specifically, and that is really to help keep perfume formula secret. So when you put a fragrance formula in your cosmetic product, you're actually just allowed to put the term parfum or aroma, and that essentially covers the whole fragrance concentrate which you make, allowing it to remain secret. Now, in order to make sure that your fragrance concentrate is safe, what you should go and do is make it according to the IFRA, that's the International Fragrance Regulatory Association, guidelines. So you can go onto the IFRA website and look at their guidelines for how to make your perfume safe. Um, they give you things like limits for certain raw materials. I'm not going to cover that in this video, I've talked about it in other videos and I'll probably cover it again in future videos. But that is the first kind of stop for your fragrance. Concentrate. You want to make sure it's safe by following the IFRA. However, after that, in terms of the actual labeling that the law requires you to do, there is a certain uh, exception to that rule that your whole fragrance can be termed as parfum or aroma. And that is, there is a certain list of 26 uh, fragrance raw materials that are frequently found in perfumes, and these must be listed on your ingredients label alongside the parfum or aroma as long as they are 
above 0.001% in any kind of leave-on product, so a perfume you spray on is a leave-on product, or 0.01% on a rinse-off product. So that would be something like a shampoo, which you put it on, but then you wash it straight off. So, as you can imagine, 0.001% for a leave-on product, that's a really low concentration. So that means if you have any of the raw materials on this list of 26, and let me give you a couple of examples, geraniol, farnesol, eugenol, coumarin, linalol, things you would really commonly put in your fragrance formula, if they're above 0.001%, which is a tiny amount, they have to be put on the label. So as you can imagine, this is why all of these things are on the label. For a perfume, you'll see all of these ingredients that you commonly would also see as raw materials. It's because the EU law literally says if you have these ingredients, which are potential allergens, then you have to put them on the label. And this is mostly so people who know that they're allergic to those ingredients can make sure that they can avoid those products. So it doesn't mean that you can really work out anything about the formula from these labels. And that's because having it above 0.001% is actually really common. But just because it's there doesn't mean um, that it's necessarily a significant part of the formula. You might have linalol on the ingredients list. You don't know if they've used linalol at something like 1% in the formula or 0.001% and it's just touched that limit. So it really gives you absolutely no information whatsoever. Now, the other thing about a lot of these uh, ingredients, these chemicals, is that these aren't just raw materials that you would put into the perfume um, as a standalone ingredient. Often, these are actually found in natural uh, products. So if you've used naturals in perfumery, things like essential oils and absolutes, it's really, really common for uh, these things, like essential oils, to contain aroma chemicals such as linalol as components. Because remember, an essential oil is a bit like an accord from nature, or it's a big collection of chemicals that are found in the plant naturally. So there'll be things often like linalol, geraniol, just found naturally inside the essential oils. And when you get your uh, data sheet for your essential oils, if you want to go and sell that perfume, you need to go and check the components that are found in this list of 26, and they should be denoted in the safety data sheet for your uh, natural product, for your raw material. And it should say, for example, say you've got some uh, bergamot essential oil, it should say, hey, you've got this much limonene as a percent and this much linalol as a percent inside the essential oil. It's then your job to go and work out the percent uh, that you use, say, the bergamot oil in your formula, and then what percent of that is then linalol based on what the manufacturer said. And then you can work out, adding up with any other essential oils or any linalol you added on your own, is the total level of linalol in your formula Firstly, does it meet the IFRA limit? And secondly, um, does it go above these labeling requirements, which is really common because say you use a bit of pretty much most essential oils, you will have just enough linalol to push you over that 0.001%. So basically what this is all saying is that all you really need to do is use a common essential oil and you have to put linalol or something else on your label. So this is pretty much why that these labels don't mean anything because they give you no real insight into what was actually used. It's just simply a labeling requirement. So this brings me on to another common question that I get asked, which is a really similar question. And that is because these raw materials are put on the ingredients list, does that mean I should be adding them to my perfumes? Now, now that you understand how these labels are made, you probably already realize that the answer is no. There's no real reason to go and add these. It's more that they're there just because they happen to end up in the formula due to being a natural, or say it just really worked quite well to have that raw material in your formula, or it was really necessary, and therefore it ended up on the label. But should I add these raw materials specifically? Are they gonna help my perfume? No, not necessarily. Which raw materials uh, help your perfume? Um, that is completely down to the structure of your perfume and which raw materials your perfume might already have in it. That is completely a different topic and that's all down to the way that they smell and the way that they perform, you know, having your mixture of top, mid and base notes, things like that. But there's no real benefit of having these raw materials from the label inside. If anything, you would be adding extra potential allergens, which is in a sense, making your perfume worse because you don't really want people to be allergic to your perfume if possible.
So if you're going to use a natural product which naturally contains some of these ingredients, then that's a perfectly good reason to go and use these ingredients. Again, if the certain smell, say hydroxy citronella for a lily of the valley smell, or eugenol for a kind of spicy, clove-like warming smell, say that's just what you need in your formula, then that's a perfectly good reason to go and add it but you shouldn't go and add it just because you think that all of these other uh, perfumes on the market have it listed. That's not a good reason to add it. And also, most of the time, these things are found in trace amounts anyway. Remember, it's only that 0.001% that it has to breach in order for you to legally have to put it on your label. So, I hope this video has cleared some things up about the ingredients list and the question of whether you actually can make the formula based on them. The answer is no. So you may also have the question of, well, if I do want to make a formula, how can I go and do that? Now, there are two main methods for this. One is the technique of matching, which is really a training exercise done by a perfumer. And another one is the use of a GCMS analysis, which is an analytical technique they use in labs. It's done by chemists. So I'm not going to discuss these in this video, but if you're interested in hearing about some of these techniques, then leave me a comment down in the comment section below, and I'll try to cover them in a future video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video, and I'll see you next time.